Alright guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about fan shutdown on a fire alarm system. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone has really made a video on this, um, and like an actual demonstration, so if not, I guess this will be the first one. So fan shutdown is something that is commonly used in buildings, uh, and it's tied into the fire alarm system. So on the top of the board, we have three smoke detectors. Below the third one to the right, we have a relay module. Now, this is all programmed into the IFP50. And if you see on the top right of the screen, we have a little desk fan. Um, if you look below the relay, you see we have a junction box. You see we have a piece of fire wire going into the junction box, along with incoming 12-2 Romex from the panel to the junction box. And from the bottom of the junction box, I know you can't see it on the camera, but it goes down to a standard wall receptacle, 120 volt. Uh, this is just a demonstration, obviously, but in the junction box, you would need to have a divider from low voltage to high voltage. Uh, so basically, the, it splits off low voltage and high voltage. Um, some parts come with it. I think it might be a special order part. Uh, but I'll have to find the part number and I'll put it in the description. So, how does the fan shut down when the fire alarm goes off? Well, that's all done in programming. So, the three smoke detectors are programmed. They each have their own zone. The one to the left is set up for the basement. The one in the middle is set up for the first floor. And the one to the right is set up for the second floor. Now, it goes zones one, two, three. If any of those zones were to activate, it's going to trip that relay. That relay is in an output group. It's in output group two. So when any of the fire zones activate, it's going to trip group one, which is the horn strobes, and group two, which is also the fan shutdown. And it also will trip group 125 uh, for your general alarm. So, the way it's wired, I know you can't really see it, but it's using a PAM relay inside that junction box. And this is what a PAM relay looks like. It's a PAM-1. One side takes 24 volts, the other side takes 120 volts. Now on this PAM relay, you can power it with different voltages. So right here you see we have a white, a black, and a red. And on the other side, on the contacts, we have orange, yellow, and blue. If you power it up with 24 volts, you would use the red and the white. Red is positive, white is negative. If you're going to power it using 120 volts, you are going to power it with the black and the white. So now, on the actual relay itself, common is our blue, yellow is our normally closed, and orange is our normally open. We are using normally closed contacts right now, okay? However, I actually had to use blue and orange because normally, so right now there's continuity between the blue and the orange, which is actually normally closed, even though orange is normally open. But what's gonna happen is when the relay loses power, orange becomes normally open and yellow becomes normally closed. So it's, it's kind of reversed. So I have 24 volt aux power leaving the IFP50. So, and for those of you who are saying, well, hold on a second, the IFP50 doesn't have an onboard aux power terminal. That's correct. What you have to do is you have to program one of the NACs as constant 24 volt aux power. And what it does is it runs over to the relay and it's landed, the, po the two negatives are spliced together and the positives land on the relay, common and normally closed. And the other side of that goes down into the PAM relay, which gives it its 24 volts. And there's a coil inside that PAM relay that when energized, it will operate the relay contacts on the actual PAM relay. So, and I will I'll have to make a different video on a, what a PAM relay is and what it does. Um, so what happens is when the fire alarm goes off, that relay opens the circuit, dropping power to the PAM relay, which then opens the hot wire going down to the receptacle, which will shut down the fan. Now, you're not gonna see a fan plug into a receptacle. I'm just, obviously I have this set up for a demonstration. So what we're gonna do 
is we are going to activate the smoke detector. We'll activate one of them. Uh, and you'll see that when it goes into alarm, the relay, you'll hear it click and you'll see it blink red because when it's normal, it blinks green and you'll see the fan shut down. Now, the relay is set for latching non-silenceable. So if the alarm goes off, you silence the alarm, that relay is still going to be tripped until you hit reset. Because if there's a fire, you don't want the fans running giving more air and oxygen to the fire. It's, it's not what you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trip the smoke detector and we're gonna use smoke centurion for that right here. And we will see it in action. Here we go. All right, so now the fan has stopped. Come here, smoke photo, basement, basement above FACP. Oh, it looks like this one went into alarm too. All right, floor one hallway and floor one. They're close to each other, that's why. All right, we will acknowledge them. So right now the relay has opened up the 24 volts going to the PAM relay, which then dropped power to the contacts on the PAM relay. So now it opened up the circuit with the hot coming in here and the hot going down here because it's spliced. It's basically a switch leg. So now what we're going to do is we're going to silence that. I should probably have some canned air, but... And now we're gonna go ahead and reset it. And once we reset it, the fan will start back up automatically. All right. So that was just a quick demonstration on how this works. I will get more in depth with it uh, at some point, but I just wanted to give you guys a basic overview. If you have any questions whatsoever regarding this uh, setup or just about fan shutdown in general, uh, please ask away and I will uh, give you the best answer that I have. So thank you guys for watching. Hope this helped. See ya.